Hello everybody, Toastbomb here, today bringing you even more Halo 4 gameplay from the PAX event. This again is not my video, this is MLG Bravo's video, so links in the description. If you guys want to go check out his video, subscribe to him, like his video, comment, whatever, because without his video, this video would not be possible. So one thing I want to talk about before I get into the main little topic of this video is dropping the flag right now in this build of the game even in custom game settings there's no option to allow you to drop the flag which i think is a mistake i guess if that feature is not in the game even in its release it's not the end of the world you can work around it but one of the big things that makes games just more intuitive and easy to play is consistency and not allowing players to drop the flag doesn't allow for consistency because when you're playing oddball you can drop the oddball we've seen that where you can literally pass the oddball to other players so you can get that thing off your hands you don't have to die with it um, so that feels inconsistent to me I guess I can see where they are going with it because if it was ball there's no way unless you end the game to get rid of it you'd have to just complete the game or die uh, but with the flag you can actually capture the flag and then that's how you get it off your hands so maybe it's just a way of encouraging people once they get the flag to actually go through and cap it or something like that but I guess if there's no dropping the flag in the final game it's not the end of the world we can work around it and just you'll have to play the game and strategize slightly differently and be more careful when you do pull the flag now we're going to talk about the light rifle. So I find this just the concept of this weapon really cool because it's going way back to like Halo 2 Alpha Beta sort of era battle rifle. Because I don't know if you know this, but originally you were going to be able to switch between a single shot and a burst with the BR, but later into the development of Halo 2 that got removed and it was just burst all around. Now with the light rifle you get that option again so it's kind of going back to that old school super old school BR the ideas they had behind that and now they're implementing it into this new weapon. I don't know how many shots it takes to kill because all the light rifle gameplay I've seen is pretty much from this video and the people aren't really getting clean shots onto guys or the guys that they're shooting are already weak so it's getting it's really hard to tell how much it actually takes to kill somebody and it's really even harder to tell how many burst shots it takes to kill somebody when you zoomed in also the new uh, Promethean pistol type thing the bolt shot we've found out is actually headshot capable it's not some sort of a plasma type weapon that isn't capable of getting headshots and it has some sort of overcharge feature that makes it act sort of like a shotgun so maybe like a mauler type thing I'm not really sure I haven't seen any gameplay of it so far I really want to and I'm really interested in this weapon but I just have not seen it also, other things that aren't in this video, the jetpack. We have seen some gameplay of the jetpack that's been released from people using it at PAX, yada yada yada. We have seen it, and it seems like it functions pretty much the same as the uh, the Reach jetpack. It maybe seems, I've heard people reporting, that it's a little more sluggish, you can't quite get as high in the air from it, and it doesn't last quite as long, but really at the end of the day, basically functions the same. I think it's important that it doesn't really allow you to go very high because then there's ways to get out of the map and then Bun or 343 has to account for those things and then it kind of ruins the map flow and all that. The reach maps were a little bit funky with that where they were trying to fit in the jetpack because there was this whole new vertical space that could be explored in the game. But also just the map design in general in this game doesn't seem like it really caters towards a jetpack at all. It seems like they really just ignored all that stuff, made it awesome maps, and then the jetpack's just going to be useful on some maps where it kind of just happens to be useful. They're not trying to force it into the maps where this place is going to be useful for a jetpack. It's just kind of or going to organically develop that way. Which I think is really important and really cool and it just makes the maps better in general. 
also in this gameplay, there's so much new stuff. We also get to see more things from the railgun, which this gun, this power weapon, just looks like a beast. It's basically a Gauss cannon in your hands. Like, it seriously is. It shoots slower, it takes a while to wind up, so it's a little bit harder to aim in the same way that a Spartan laser is kind of hard to aim because you have to predict that charge-up time. But it looks like that thing is just gonna demolish people. It's not very effective on vehicles, similar to how the Gauss cannon on the back of the Warthogs aren't super super effective on the vehicles, so really it's just a handheld Gauss cannon. That seems awesome and insane, I can't wait to try it out. So yeah, that's pretty much all the new stuff that's from this video, but man, just in general, I am super excited about this game. Like, all the primary weapons look amazing, diverse, but yet concise in a way that, oh, it's just awesome. And I think there's really room for them to kind of mesh together in a team situation where you could have some people using light rifles, DMRs, BRs, and all these different situations if you're a main slayer, support player, or whatever, objective player. It seems like maybe the light rifle's going to cater towards longer ranges. It seems like it'd be kind of awkward to use at very close ranges. And the burst seems like it might also be really helpful at range because you kind of have a slight, a slight margin of error because you're just putting out more bullets onto the field. Also, it seems like... I mean, the BR has a slight amount of spread, they've been saying, but it seems like the light rifle is just pinpoint accurate so I could see that being very useful as well because it's just not gonna miss wherever you're aiming it's gonna go right there every time which if that's true I think that's actually one of the only weapons with zero spread at least for the equipable primary weapons because the DMR is controllable but has the potential to have some amount of spread in its shots. The BR is just always going to have spread, and as far as I know, the Carvine probably, assuming it acts similarly to the previous variations of the weapon, will have some form of spread as well, but the light rifle just seems like it's a freaking arrow and goes straight through people's skulls with 100% accuracy, so maybe that's the gun that actually rises up to the top and is the one that the top people really end up using. Um, so far it seems like its only real downfall would be that it really doesn't seem to have that much ammo in it, so it doesn't have very much potential for getting a lot of kills, but then again now there is a tactical package thing that allows you to reload faster, similar to how sleight of hand works in Call of Duty. It also allows you to switch weapons faster, so maybe that will end up being what everyone uses. Maybe that's the most skillful weapon that we've been looking for, this utility weapon, for so long in Halo, but yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm super excited to find out more about this weapon. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked the video, you can leave a like or a comment. If you really liked the video, you can subscribe, because I post new Halo videos every day. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.